All right. Welcome, everyone. This is Chris of the Ancient Scholar. Hope you're doing well. All right. So as you can see, uh, if you were expecting some uh, high fidelity video with high production value, well, you've come to the wrong place. And anyone who's been a long time viewer of my content knows that already. But let's talk about this nonetheless. Okay. So uh, as promised, I'm going to be starting a series of videos talking about the current of injury and how and why that shows up the way it does on the electrocardiogram, the ECG. Uh, so just some basic review. Uh, so here we have a PQRST complex. P weighs a little, a little large, but let's uh, we'll make that maybe a bit more reasonable P wave. Okay, cool. So you got your PQRST complex. One thing you need to understand is when we look at the PQRST complex, specifically talking about depolarization of the ventricles, uh, we're going to take a look at the action potential. I'm going to superimpose that or, or put that right underneath the QRS complex so we can appreciate what's going on. So phase four is the resting potential, and then phase zero is uh, fast depolarization, right? That's going to be occurring around the beginning of the QRS complex. And so you have a lot of sodium rushing into the cell. And then phase one is where we have the very earliest part of depolarization. And in phase one, potassium ions begin leaving the cell, and that's why it drops down. And then in phase two, calcium ions are entering the myocytes and the calcium um, moving into the cell offsets the potassium leaving, at least electrical charge, right? Because it's the movement of ions that's really causing these currents. And then in phase three, potassium continues to leave the cell and you have positive charge le leaving the cell and the uh, potential moves down toward negative. And then in phase four here, you got the sodium potassium pump that reestablishes, right? It pumps the sodium back out and the potassium back in and reestablishes the resting potential, right? So it's important to understand what ions are moving in the action potential and so when we look at the T wave and we look at the ST segment specifically um, and the J point, this is all primarily, right, if, I, if I drop this down here, we're primarily looking at repolarization. And one of the most important ions in terms of repolarization is the movement of potassium out of and then ultimately back into the cell. So potassium current, the flow of potassium is very important when it comes to the ST segment. Um, that is some important foundational material for us to understand. All right. Some additional foundational material to understand is how the heart actually gets perfused. So you have these epicardial arteries, right? The coronary arteries, for example, are epicardial. They're on the outside of the heart. So this is the epicardium this is the myocardium, the middle part of the heart where the majority of the muscle exists. And then the endocardium, the inner part of the heart. And so blood flows through the epicardial vessels and penetrates into the myocardium and perfuses. So the heart gets perfused from the outside in. So if you have some sort of obstruction of blood flow, the ischemia is going to start here on the inner surface of the heart and then cells closer and closer to that occlusion um, will become ischemic later on. So the ischemia first develops here endo, in, on the endocardium and then it progresses from there. And so what you get is you get this ischemia that develops on the, the inner part of the heart and this is sometimes referred to as sub-endocardial ischemia or even infarction. And then it will progress or can progress 
to include the entire thickness of the of the heart wall, the ventricular wall. If it's a ventri ventricle, that's um, that's ischemic and ultimately becomes injured and even infarcted or dead, right? And we call that a transmural ischemia and or injury and infarction. And remember, ischemia. Ischemia is just a reduction in perfusion, and that may or may not be associated with uh, irreversible long-term damage. Generally not if it's reversed. And then if ischemia goes uh, unchecked or untreated, it will cause injury. And in the injury phase, you're gonna have a reduction in the ability for the mitochondria in those myocytes of the heart to produce adenosine triphosphate. And coming back here, ATP is important to power the sodium potassium pumps that are reestablishing the resting membrane potential. Uh, and that's a very important, particularly when it comes to the flow of potassium. And then what happens when cells actually die when you have death of those myocytes, we call that infarction. All right, and this pattern of in in ischemia, injury, and death or infarction, again, starts in the endocardium and then will move through to the epicardium if it involves the entire thickness of the myocardium. And so the, the kind of the classic ECG changes that we see are things like hyperacute T waves, broad, large T waves uh, when compared to the QRS complex, right? And here's a more normal appearing T wave, right? Um, to include uh, other T wave abnormalities uh, or modifications like the winter T waves, you can get ST depression as well. You can get ST elevation, and then you can get the development of what are called pathological Q waves. So these are Q waves that are very large, generally larger than about a third of the entire length of the QRS complex. And these pathological Q waves these pathological Q waves uh, tend to be negatively deflected. They tend to deflect in the opposite direction that you would normally see the QRS complex. And in most leads, with the exception of V1, the QRS complex, the Q waves are gonna be very small, and then the RS complex is going to be upright or it's gonna be positively deflected, all right? Uh, with substantial Q waves, you got these deep, large Q waves that are a significant fraction of the entire QRS complex. So the, the question is, what's happening here? Well, what's happening with pathological Q waves, and that's what I'm gonna focus on for the rest of this video, and then we'll come back and talk about some of these other changes here. But what's happening with pathological Q waves in the setting of uh, an occlusive myocardial infarction is you have transmural injury that results in death. So you essentially have the death or the complete loss of function of myocytes in a chunk of the heart, all right? And that is what causes the Q wave. Okay, but why? Like, what's actually going on for that Q wave to manifest in the ECG? Well, let's take the example of an inferior wall myocardial infarction, all right? So that is where you have the inferior wall of the left ventricle takes a hit, um, and typically that's gonna include the right side, the right ventricle, and associated structures like the SA node. So let's just say that we have a, like a super classic, uh, you know, inferior wall MI. So we're looking at leads two, three, and augmented voltage foot, right? And we see kind of these classic pathological Q waves and some ST elevation occurring in those leads. All right, so there's two, there's three, ABF. All right, so you kind of have that classic, 
that classic pattern of, of injury with the elevation and the infarction with those large Q waves. So what's going on there? So if we were to take a look at the inferior wall of the left ventricle, so here's a large model of the heart, um, and you've got the right coronary artery here, and then the left main coronary artery, which becomes the LAD, the left anterior descending artery, and the circumflex here. So an inferior wall MI is often caused by occlusion of this right coronary artery, which feeds the right side of the heart, the right atrium, the right ventricle, but it also feeds the diaphragmatic surface or what we call the inferior aspect of the left ventricle. So it's kind of like right in here. Um, all of this tissue here that I pulled back or reflected back, this here, this big chunk of muscle, which is the majority of the left ventricle, is mainly perfused by the left anterior descending artery. So most of the septum and a big chunk of the anterior surface of the left ventricle but the inferior aspect of the left ventricle right in here um, is what is perfused mainly by the right coronary artery. So you have a chunk of the inferior wall dying off and you also have the right ventricle, right, taking a hit, which it often does in the setting of uh, occlusion of the right coronary artery. Something very interesting happens. So you have essentially a chunk. So let's say that this is the a chunk of the inferior aspect of the left ventricle, and a chunk of the myocardium has essentially died. It is right. It is infarcted, and so these infarcted or these severely damaged cells are no longer undergoing action potentials, right? So there are no action potentials. And so essentially what has happened is this aspect of the heart is not producing electrical activity. And essentially you just have a window now. This tissue from an electrical standpoint um, is opaque. This is like a clear window, right? It's not generating its own electrical activity and it just, it, it, it's not doing anything. And it's like, a, it's a clear window, right? And so what's happening is from the perspective of the leads, right? So remember the, the three leads that look at the inferior wall of the left ventricle are two, three and AVF, right? So lead two is right here, right? So it, it's running, um, from the right arm down to the left foot, uh, lead three, left arm to left foot, and then AVF is one of the uh, Goldberger leads where the negative electrode is a, a, virtual, uh, a virtual electrode that the machine creates more or less in the middle of lead one, and then it extends down to the uh, left leg or foot, right? So this is kind of what they're looking at. And so if I take a little heart here, it's gonna look something kind of like this, right? And so I have an area, I have the inferior wall of the left ventricle infarcting, and it becomes a, a window that opens up from a, an a electrocardiographic standpoint. Well, what's happening here? So, well, what's happening is, let me try to draw the heart in here best I can. All right. So, and you're gonna to have to imagine that I've pulled, I've reflected a chunk of the heart out, and we have a, a chunk of the heart here that's not working anymore, and it is not producing action potentials. And so what's happening is these leads are able to look through that dead area, right? And it looks through the dead area to the opposite basically the opposite area of the heart from the area that's dead. So the, this is like a window. Essentially, this is a, a, a window, an electrocardiographic window, because these cells are no longer uh, working, right? And so we're looking through this, 
and we're actually seeing electrical activity on the opposite side of the heart. In this case, it's often um, going to be the lateral wall. The problem is, remember, that um, when electrical activity moves away from the positive electrode, which is down here, right, that's going to produce a negative or a negatively deflected complex, right? And so what's happening is this electrical activity that is opposite to the, the infarcted area of heart, that electrical activity is kind of moving away from, right, the positive electrode, which is down here, right? The positive electrode for 2, 3, and AVF is down here. And, but this electrical activity is kind of moving in this direction, in a lateral wall. It's moving away from these three leads. And so what's happening is you're actually detecting that, and that's that electrical activity that you're, you're seeing through that window of non-functional heart tissue is what's producing this Q wave, right? So you're actually looking at the, the um, opposite wall of the heart or we call the reciprocal wall of the heart. And so you're seeing electrical activity occurring in, in, in this case, in the kind of the lateral area of the heart. Um, and then, so you get this big Q wave, and then you're also seeing uh, electrical activity that's occurring in the area of the heart of the right ventricle, left uh, inferior wall of the left ventricle that's still functional. So you're gonna see that as well, right, the normally conducted uh, pattern of the myocytes that are still functioning. And so you're going to have that Q wave and that Q wave, that large Q wave, yeah, the length of that Q wave is basically how large of a window of infarcted tissue do we have. And it could be the inferior wall or it could be any other wall. I just used the inferior wall as an example. Uh, so that is why we see pathological Q waves develop in the setting of trans, severe transmural injury and infarction. And generally, because you have to have substantial infarction or loss of heart tissue, the pathological Q waves generally not reversible. Um, if you catch this very early on, where you still have injury and not infarction, it is possible you can get some resolution of, Q, of pathological Q waves, but in general, uh, these take some time to develop. And so this is generally not a very early finding in the setting of a myocardial infarction, because you end up, you have to lose, you have to actually, right, you have ischemia, injury, and infarction, and generally you have to get to the point where you now have in actively infarcting or dying tissue. Um, so you're looking at several hours uh, before you start developing these pathological Q waves. Okay, everyone. So that is the detailed explanation for why we see pathological Q waves uh, that are associated with substantial transmural infarction. Um, and just think of this as a window, essentially, a window of non-functional tissue. And the, electro the lead is looking through that window at the opposite wall of the heart, but that electrical activity on that opposite wall of the heart is moving away from the positive electrode of those leads. And that is producing a negatively deflected complex, and that is responsible for the pathological Q wave that we see. All right, everyone, I hope you found this uh, video informative and helpful, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.